Can you handle the truth? If you can follow some simple directions, then the answer is yes. The exotic rocket launcher Truth returns today in Destiny 2, and while the exotic quest shouldn't take you too long, you will need to do a variety of activities in order to complete it. To begin the quest, you'll need to complete one run of the Menagerie. This week's final boss is an ogre that requires players to kill Cursed Thrall, pick up the items they drop, and then throw them at the boss to break his shield. You don't need to open the chest or do anything specific with the runes, just complete a run of the Menagerie and the quest is a guaranteed drop at the very end. You'll be asked to visit Petra in the Dreaming City and once you talk to her, you should pick up her Ascendant Challenge bounty and head to the Dvalian Mists. The Ascendant Challenge you'll need to complete for this week's quest is located in the Bay of Drowned Wishes Lost Sector. In order to actually see the portal, remember you need to activate a Tincture of Queen's Foil. Either before or after you do this Ascendant Challenge, you'll want to stack up on these tinctures by visiting the Skull in Harbinger's Seclude to buy more. You'll need them later for quest steps. Once you complete the Ascendant Challenge, you'll be tasked with collecting four map fragments which are scattered around the game. These four map fragments are found by doing the following. The first one is found by collecting an Ascendant Chest in the Dreaming City through Patrol. There is one in the Bay of Drowned Wishes in the middle of the room, but the one I picked up was in the entrance to the Blind Well, where you'd normally spawn in the Last Wish Raid. You'll need to be Ascendant to see these platforms. The second fragment can be found in the cistern on Nessus. In the bottom left hand corner of the map, you'll find an area where the land meets the Vex Milk Lake. You'll also need to be ascendant to see these platforms, which will lead you up to a secret chest and your next fragment. The third can be found by traveling to the Tangled Shore and the Jetsam of Saturn region. Travel into the Hive Tomb Ship as if you were following the Mindbender story mission, and when you end up at the final room, an ogre will be waiting for you. Killing him will drop your map fragment. The last fragment is found by completing a Nightfall Strike, that's it. Complete any of the three offered Nightfall Strikes and you'll get your fourth fragment. Each map fragment comes with its own challenge that you must complete as part of the quest. The first fragment's challenge requires defeating Hive on the Tangled Shore. Travel over to the Lost Sector in Sorix's Cut to knock out that one pretty quickly. The second fragment's challenge is to find a Corsair badge and then return it. This one could take a while because in order to actually get the pursuit item to drop, you'll just have to kill a bunch of enemies. It could drop in 5 kills like it did for me, or it could drop in 200. Take advantage of public events and lost sectors to kill a lot of enemies quickly. The Corsair quest item will have you search a specific location for the body of a downed Corsair. Killing the enemies that spawn after interacting with the body will complete the badge and you can return this to the group of Corsairs anywhere in the city. I dread accepting these. The challenge of the third fragment will ask you to complete three Nightfalls with a 100 power handicap on every run, as well as get some rocket launcher kills. 
There is no score requirement, so my advice is to put on Arc Singe, Heavyweight, and raise the power handicap to 100. Slap on Wardcliff Coil for 3 runs to the Warden of Nothing Nightfall Strike, and it should be no problem. There are plenty of enemies to kill in this strike, and even with other players, you'll get all of your Rocket Launcher kills before finishing the third Nightfall. The last Fragments challenge is to get kills while Ascendant with any rocket on Nessus. Multi-kills grant the most progress. I did this in the Lost Sector in the Cistern, but I bet you the one in Artifact's Edge with all the Vex Goblins will be way faster than this. You should be able to complete it in one run through the Lost Sector if you focus on getting those multi-kills. After you've completed every fragment, you can go ahead and turn them all in, which will bring us to the final step of the quest which states complete the Warden of Nothing strike while Ascendant and find the final hidden chest. This can be done either in a Nightfall strike or by starting up the strike from the Tangled Shore map. In order to actually spawn the platforms needed to get to this hidden chest, you need to pick up relics throughout the strike. These look similar to the ones from the Dreaming City, and the only way to see them is by being Ascendant. It appears they can spawn in a variety of locations, so I'm going to try and show you all of the different spots I found them in from a few different runs. Collecting all these relics in the strike will spawn in all the necessary Ascendant platforms and give you more time to find the chest after killing the boss. Once you've slain the Warden's Servitor and the countdown timer begins, stand on the ledge and look up ahead of you and you should find the Ascendant platform right in front of you. There will be a small path of these leading to the right and this is going to bring you right to the chest, rewarding you with truth and a triumph for finding it. Overall not a very difficult quest and one that can easily be done in 3 hours, assuming you have good luck with the Corsair badge dropping. As for the rocket launcher itself, it's pretty identical to the Destiny 1 version with tracking, volatile launch, high velocity rounds, horseshoes and hand grenades, and a composite stock. It also holds three rockets in the mag, which is a first for any rocket in Destiny 2, and it looks and feels very similar. And I can definitely see this being a popular weapon in Gambit, especially with all the heavy ammo around, as most of the time you have a lot of distance between other players and the rocket's tracking could easily cover the ground between you and your target. I played one game and had a blast shooting people across the map with truth, just like old times. One thing I am really happy about is having another Void Heavy Weapon, as this could potentially see some more use in PvE paired with the Tractor Cannon. Time will tell how much this is worth using in either game mode, but for now, that's how to get the Truth Exotic Rocket Launcher, and thank you all very much for watching.